Hello and welcome in to another bonus edition episode of the Couch Jams podcast. I am Cody, walking you through the Couch Jams World Cup. If you don't know what that is, that is our four-year fantasy football experience with three 10-man leagues competing against everybody to see who will be the top in a four-year span in fantasy football. Happy Halloween if you're listening to this on Tuesday. Happy No Shave November if you're listening to this on Wednesday or later. Big day. Uh, October 31st, trade deadline day, lots of action happening across the NFL. So before we get into the World Cup, I did just want to recap the trade deadline and talk about some of the biggest moves. So two moves happened on Monday, uh, a big one and a small one. So the big one was defensive lineman Leonard Williams got traded to the Seattle Seahawks from the New York Giants for a second and a fifth round pick. And then following that up, another defensive lineman, Contavious Street of the deep uh, Philadelphia Eagles defensive line got moved for a, a sixth round pick for Contavia Street and a seventh round pick. So a little bit of a pick swap out of the player for the Falcons. But Tuesday, October 31st, the last day before the trade deadline expired, was the big day. The Chicago Bears kicked it off, sending a second round pick to the Washington Commanders for Montez Sweat. Then the Vikings, staying with the NFC North, they traded for recently benched quarterback Josh Dobbs after losing Kirk Cousins to a torn Achilles. They sent a sixth-round pick, got Josh Dobbs, and a seventh-round pick. The Vikings weren't done as they sent offensive lineman, more uh, the guard Ezra Cleveland, to the Jacksonville Jaguars for a sixth-round pick. Then, possibly, most likely, the biggest move of the day, the San Francisco 49ers sent a third-round pick to the Washington Commanders to acquire Chase Young, so the Washington Commanders send both their starting defensive ends. The 49ers uh, get Chase Young, reunite him with former college teammate Nick Bosa, and add to their already elite defense. The Lions add a pass catcher in Donovan Peoples-Jones for a six-round pick from the Cleveland Browns. And then the last move of the day was the Green Bay Packers sent Rasul Douglas and a fifth-round pick to the Buffalo Bills for a third-round pick. So that was the day. Uh, not a lot of impact for us fantasy players, but did just want to let you all in on the excitement that happened around. Uh, and really, I mentioned it, the 49ers getting Chase Young feels like the biggest deal of the day, very reminiscent of when the Rams a few seasons ago traded for Von Miller. This could very easily end up as a rental, only half the season for the Rams. That ended up in a Super Bowl before Von Miller went to the Buffalo Bills. Uh, and that's the same thing. Chase Young is in a contract year. They only had to give up a third-round pick. If he balls out, plays well, they probably won't have the cap space to sign him, but they'll end up getting a 2025 third-round pick as a comp pick, depending on how free agency goes. So basically a free rental for delaying their comp pick for a third year. And this was a third-round comp pick uh, that they, they're most likely going to get for offensive tackle uh, Mike McGlinchey to the Denver Broncos or uh, for some of their – coaches and front office players getting promotions in other places. So those are the trades. Those are the moves I wanted to talk about here. Uh, like I mentioned, Kirk Cousins did tear his ace, or not his ACL, his Achilles. And we'll be out the rest of the season why the Minnesota Vikings picked up Josh Dobbs. But you're here for the World Cup recap. Let's get into it. Alrighty, and this is a good time if you're listening on Spotify to open up the phone and check out the video feed or head over to YouTube and search the Couch GMs and you can see it on video and I'm going to throw up the scores uh, and we'll go through it. We go through Group A first. As you can see, it pops onto your screen right there. Just a real quick recap of the standings. So we had a little bit of shakeup at the top as Ashley Madison uh, got the victory moved to five and three. But if you look at this, one through five are all sitting at five and three. The sixth place team is four and four. Seven, eight, and nine are three and five. And number 10 is two and six. Still anybody's game. We're going to see a lot of switch up down the stretch. Buys return this week. So there's going to be a lot of interesting actions. But let's get into what happened in week eight in group A. And as always, we're going to start with Tyler's team. He got a much needed victory this week to move to three and five. He's sitting in the seventh spot, but a big victory that is 152.48 to 129.92. And as always, we're going to take a look at the box score, see what players really help make these differences. If they're close matchups, what kind of players could you have done differently? Uh, Alvin Kamara continues to be a dominant uh, player uh, now that he is back from his suspension. 
Uh, so he continues to put up a lot of points. I saw that in PPR format specifically, he is the number one running back since his return. A lot of his work is coming to the ground, uh, but he had two touchdowns this week, uh, 50 rushing yards, 50 receiving yards. Uh, so great week for him. Uh, Terry McLaurin had a nice day with 63 yards and a touchdown in that high-scoring shootout against the Philadelphia Eagles. Jordan Addison continues to impress uh, in the absence of Justin Jefferson. And then, of course, Christian McCaffrey continuing to do Christian McCaffrey things. Uh, Sean's team, I believe that's Sean. Yes, it is Sean with the 129. Still a really good week. And if we look at here at the top, uh, he would have won against anybody else. Uh, so that's unfortunate in terms of fantasy football to get the L here. Uh, but on his team, guys like Travis Etienne had a really good performance. Jamar Chase and Jalen Waddle both over 20 points. Darren Waller uh, had a disappointing day with only 0.9 points. He's been up and down. And I do believe he got injured as well, if I remember correctly, off the top of my head for that matchup. Uh, Sean did have Johan Dotson on the bench with 20 points. Um, maybe could have swapped that out for Christian Kirk and got a little bit closer, 14 more points. N not quite would have done it. Uh, so good matchup there. Ty also had Joe Burrow on his bench with 27 points when he started Jared Goff, with the, who only had 12. Uh, so real good matchup for Tyler. We'll see if that momentum carries in to this week. Uh, the highest scoring person, I apologize, Sean would have lost to three people or – if he would have played Ashley Madison, who moved to number one in the standings, had a 170-point week to Andrew's 81.08. And let's see, how do we get those points? So he had Kirk Cousins to get almost 20, but he will have to replace him. So we'll keep an eye on that. C.D. Lamb, 35 points this week. T.J. Hawkinson, 17. George Kittle, 19. So Ashley Madison running the two tight end system, and it pays off this week. Cowboys defense continues to put up points. 16-point performance here. So... Look, when your lowest scoring player is eight points, uh, you're in for a good week, and that's exactly what happened. We can take a look here at what happened to Andrew as his team was only put up 88 points. Dalton Schultz, 1.5. Jacob Myers, that whole Raiders offense did not do well outside of Josh Jacobs, only putting up 2.4. Deontay Foreman, after his three touchdown performance, a lot of people put him in his lineup, and he disappointed with a four point week. Isaiah Pacheco with five. So just a lot of underperformance here. The Eagles, only two points against the Washington Commanders. Zach Moss continues to put up points at 13.9, 13.9, just in case. And then Tyler Lockett coming back had 18 points. So could have did a little bit better than 81 this week uh, with the right lineup, but would not have been able to catch him, catch Greg, as Greg moved into first place with a monster victory. In our third matchup, we have Colin. Uh, he got a much-needed victory as well as he moves to 3-5 and five with a 128.56 against Nick, who had 92.14. So not a very close matchup, almost 40-point difference, 30-point difference. And we're looking here, Tua continues to impress, uh, even with the rough week for Dallas Goddard. T. Higgins starting to get a little bit more involved in the offense. Joe Burrow's getting healthy. Uh, T. Higgins might be a guy you can acquire for a little bit cheaper if you need to make some moves in fantasy football. We'll see if anybody in the Couch GM World Cups goes after him. Adam Thielen continues to put up. Uh, solid points, and congrats on the Panthers for getting their first win. Let's go ahead and check over on Nick's team. Uh, Bijan Robinson was healthy this week and was able to play, got 12 points. Austin Eckler finally shows off why we drafted him early with an almost a 20-point performance as he gets back on roll, but then the wide receivers really let him down. Michael Thomas, Zay Flowers, Kyle Pitts, all under 10 points. Uh, Chris Godwin, though, did have a nice day at 15.3, and Michael Pittman at 14. Uh, so tough loss. Anyone big on the bench? Yes. Uh, and this would have helped not Nick. It would have helped only Colin win by more. But DeAndre Hopkins, as Will Levis, uh, broke onto the scene with his four touchdown performance. Three of those going to DeAndre Hopkins. He had 32 points in week eight. So a lot of people probably had him on the bench. We'll see how many in uh, the other World Cup leagues, how it broke down. I know in a, not in my World Cup league, but in another league. I had him on the bench, uh, and I thought it was going to cost me, but thank you, Jamar Gibbs. We haven't talked about him yet and his big week on Monday night. The fourth matchup in Group A is Tyler, who did change his name. Typically, I don't pay too much attention to name changes, but I saw this one, uh, and I thought it was funny. It's leaving Browns in La Porta Potty. That's a good one, Tyler, so I'll acknowledge your name change there. Uh, he won 116.48 victory against Andrew 
Uh, 85.88, that's the Memphis Pharaohs, Andrew, uh, if you've been following along all season long. Uh, what a smart play to play Sam Howe, who got 30.98 points for a stream that week. Uh, Aaron Jones and D. Mercado both had under 10 points, a rough week for running backs there. DJ Moore didn't do much better. Amra St. Brown had an okay week, 13 points. He looked like he's going to get a lot more. Uh, but I know he's dealing with a little bit of an illness, and they kind of stopped going at him. And I, he might even have stopped playing. Uh, it was hard to tell uh, during the second half of that game once the, the Lions got up. Sam Laporta found his way into the end zone, so he's been a solid option. Brennan Ayuk, Garrett Wilson. Uh, Garrett Wilson helped with that big reception to set up the game-tying uh, field goal. And then on the other side, uh, Tony Pollard continues to struggle. Uh He's, he's playing okay, but in terms of fantasy, he's struggling and not the guy that we were hoping for. Uh, the Bills did just sign uh, Leonard Fournette, so James Cook looks like the best back, but they've still been really trying to get Latavius Murray involved. I'm interested to see how Leonard Fournette impacts this. Does this become a three-man running back committee, or does Fournette start to eat into the Latavius Murray snaps and Jared Cook is still good to go? We'll have to wait and see. I'll get the boys' opinion on that when we go over the week nine slate later in the week, Keenan Allen, only 10 points. A little bit disappointing for what he's used to. Same with Puka Nakua, only getting 5.8 with what he's been up to all the first half of the season. Um, so just some down guys this week. Let's check out those benches. Nothing big. Uh, Gus Edwards had three rush touchdowns, so 28 points on uh, Kempe's bench. And he could have played those over any of his running backs and helped make his margin of victory a little bit bigger. Let's hit in that last matchup of... Ryan versus Cam, and this was the closest matchup in Week 8 in Group A with a 99.36 victory for Cam to a 97.76. So, again, we'll check out the teams. Uh, looks like a pretty solid day. I mean, right around 100 where you like to see uh, for fantasy in this scoring format. A couple guys didn't do very well. A couple Kenneth Walker is a big one, 7.5, a little bit low for what you've expected for him. Devontae Adams only had 1.6 points, which is not great. But if Jimmy G could have hit him on a couple passes, he could have had a huge day. They just couldn't connect Cooper Cup four points. So tough week for those guys, but Cam was still able to squeak out the victory. Now we're going to check the bench. Uh, and Gabe Davis looks like the guy that could have made an impact uh, for, why am I blanking on the name, for Ryan's team if he was able to start him. Um, Dalton Kincaid could have did better than Evan Ingram by a few points. I, it would have been close, uh, but Ryan, a few more different moves might have helped you get the victory this week. But overall, a close matchup, and Cam squeaks out the victory uh, as he moves to 5-3, and three and Ryan drops to 2-6. and six. So that's Group A for Week 8. Let's jump over to Group B. And in Group B, we'll start with my team. And if anybody is uh, watching right now, you'll see it went right to my team. And you saw my waiver pick. If you're watching on YouTube and zoomed in and paused, you could have figured out who I play or going after this week in waivers. Uh, or you could have checked out the TikTok. You'll know exactly who I was targeting uh, that we posted earlier this week as well. But in week eight, I got a convincing victory, 136.60 to 121.44. I moved to six and two. Uh, Reed was my competitor. He drops to four and four. I'm currently in second place. I'll show you all the standings when we, before we jump into Group C. Scroll down here to our the guys. Alvin Kamara, a guy I talked about in the first one. Brees Hall had a really big touchdown play. Got his points. AJ Brown continues his over 125 receiving yards. Found the end zone twice, and one of them catches was nasty. Jamar Chase having. Uh, starting to really come around here. Uh, so put up 136 points with the defense scoring two and Alexander Madison only putting up 3.8. So I'll take that. CJ Stroud had a little bit of a rough week. Um, but on Reed's side, I mean, when you draft Patrick Mahomes third overall, you don't expect any 5.64 weeks. Now he was dealing with the flu, uh, but unfortunately Patrick Mahomes did not come through this week. Uh, Joe Mixon had a nice week and I was able to overcome the 32-point performance from DeAndre Hopkins. 
uh, and the 20 performance for Ossekler. So just two really good matchups here. Uh, bench point wise, we both had some decent points. Uh, so I don't think there's anything we could have done there. So I moved to still at second place chasing Bree, but we'll get to her matchup in a little bit. This next matchup is Neil versus Sheeler. Uh, Sheeler gets the victory 120.86 to 103.12. And Neil is struggling despite having Christian McCaffrey as he now has lost two in a row as he moved to three and five. Uh, Darren Waller, again, another one. Christian Watson and that Packers offense has been putrid. Uh, on the other side, you have two. Uh, Josh Jacobs was the only thing that looked decent on the field for the Raiders on Monday night in terms of a fantasy output. So he was able to find the touchdown and save his day. Uh, Devontae Smith had a 20-point performance. Uh, only a 17-point difference with Gus Edwards on the bench and, you know, a guy like Christian Watson in your flex spot or even at the running back who had been a running back position. You play him, you might have a chance here uh, for Neil. So just one player could have made all the difference in the world uh, in this matchup. But Neil takes the loss, moves to 3-5, and five, and Sheeler gets the win, moving to 4-4. Four and four. Next up is Shelby at versus... Aaron uh, and or Levan, uh, he goes by both, and Shelby gets the victory one nineteen point nine six, and Levan takes another loss ninety eight point eight eight as he is now zero and eight on the season. Really tough season for him this week, and this is one of his better performances. Uh, Miles Sanders, though, uh, I can't remember if he was either a late scratch or a guy that they saved in that game uh putting up the zero points let's see if any of the running backs on his he had chuba hubbard get six jameer gibbs on his bench uh so 27 points added to that swap those two out he could have had his first win this week uh if he would have played the right people with shout out to shelby for getting ahead on the trey mcbride as he came in with 14 targets 10 catches 95 yards and a touchdown and 20 fantasy points uh, that could be a real solid tight end moving forward. Now that they're switching up quarterbacks, we'll see how that plays out. Uh, so 120 points when you have Cooper Cup getting four, Devontae Adams getting 1.6. Uh, if these guys can turn it around, Shelby could be a real uh, threat in Group B as we move forward. Uh, the fourth matchup in Group B was Hayden and Josh. Josh was one of the highest scoring teams last week and took a big drop off this week. Uh, as he lost 119.88 to 79.96. Let's check out the lineups, and we'll start with Josh. What what went wrong this week? Um, and when your defense is your second highest score by only 0.86 points, that starts to be the problem. Raheem Mostert, double digits, mainly thanks to a touchdown. Isaiah Pacheco, not it this week. Amari Cooper was able to get just over 10, but then George Pickens, didn't get 10. Hunter Henry, less than five. Najee Harris, only eight. Save Flowers, four points. So just a really tough week this week. Now, Josh did have Joe Burrow and Garrett Wilson on the bench. He will get Justin Jefferson back, hopefully at some point this season. So he's by no means out of it. Uh, just hopefully he gets some better luck this week. Uh, but let's look at Hayden's team. Trevor Lawrence had a solid week. Saquon, despite... That low-scoring game had over 125 rushing yards, so he had a really good week for fantasy. Uh, so he continues to do well even when the Giants are not. Andre Swift got in the end zone on the tush-push fake, uh, which was only a matter of time for that happen. And then, so pretty much everyone on his team scored more than six or ten points, except for Andre Stevenson, who had six. And there wasn't too many people. He didn't have the Cowboys defense on the bench. They got 16, but he he streamed the Steelers week, and they had 13. Not a bad option. Deontay Johnson on there as well. So he has some guys, and he's currently sitting at 4-4 four and four in fourth place. And then our last matchup is Bree, who gets to stay undefeated, uh, 117.48 with the uh, victory over Marcus, who put up 103.16. Marcus was at the highest score coming into the week in the league. He is no longer the highest scorer, and he takes another loss, moving to three and five, and the first person out in the playoffs if they ended today in Group B. But let's take a look at these teams. Jalen Hurts, big performer for Marcus. Lamar Jackson had a down day despite their victory. 
uh, with only putting up 12 points. That was still enough for Bree to get the victory, uh, mainly thanks to, surprise, surprise, Tyreek Hill's 21-point performance. Uh, he is carrying a lot of people in fantasy to victories. George Kittle had almost 20 points, so that's a good week. Michael Pittman continues to do well. All in all, let's see if there's any big names on the bench that could have did anything different for either of those two teams. Does not look that way, so Bree continues to stay undefeated. And then just a real quick recap of the current standings. Bree is undefeated, sitting at the number one spot. I am 6-2 and two at the number two spot, but I did take over as the highest scoring team. Uh, Shelby is three at five and three, and then four through six is four and four. Seven through nine is three and five. And then, unfortunately, Aaron is down there at 0 and 8. So there is a two-game difference between third place and ninth place. So, again, we're going to see a lot of action as these buys continue to pick up. Some teams will take some losses as they can't manage the bye weeks, and this will definitely shake up as we move through the next couple of weeks and start making the trek for the fantasy playoffs. One more group to get through, that is gr Group C, which George is in. Uh, before we get into it, we'll start at the standings. I'm mentioning George, he's currently sitting second at 5-3. and three. Uh, Brandon is 5-3 and three as well, as well as Doug, so that's 2-4. through four. Snyder is back on top, 6-2, uh, and two. Uh, so he is the lone part 6-2. and two. Then 5-7 through seven is 4-4, four and 8-8. Four, and nine or three and five. And then Anthony got his first win this week uh, as he moved to one and seven. So like I talked about last week, Owen seven was not a death sentence. He is only three games out of a playoff spot with multiple teams having to play each other. He can still do this. Let's get into the week eight matchups though. Starting with George's team, George did get the victory 122.6 to 114.36 versus Jim. Now, if you scroll down here to the simple box score, you'll notice that George was done going into Monday night football with a basically a 10-point lead and maybe a 12-point, we'll say a 12-point lead, and Jim had both Jacoby Myers and Devontae Adams. George, I was talking to him, he was like, yeah, I, I'm not going to win the World Cup this week. There's no way both those guys don't get at least 12 points. Well, he was wrong. They did not. Uh, so that's 2.4 and 1.6 for those guys, only combining for four points. George was able to squeak away with the victory, uh, despite Jim having Jalen Hurts, Travis Etienne. Um, so a lot of good players there. George did have Tua, one of his mainstays, and then A.J. Brown with 29 points. Big reason he won. But George could have had a lot more points, uh, so – Maybe the win was warranted uh, with Dak Prescott on the bench with 28 points. Only would have been slightly, it would have been about seven points more than two of this week. DeAndre Hopkins on the bench with 32 points and Gus Edwards on the bench with 28 points. So a lot of points left on the bench. So George's bench points are at 118 where his total points are 122. So he could almost outscore himself on the bench. So Good win for George this week as he now is on a four-game win streak. So he is one and three through four weeks. The next four weeks he goes um, four and zero, oh, moves to five and three, second place. Uh, so shout out to him. Next up is Jason. Jason gets a victory, one twenty point nine zero versus Mikey B at ninety seven point one two. Same thing. You'll see a lot of these names start to repeat themselves as always. The running backs were not great, but you put up 120 points, so it's still a good week, mainly thanks to the double stack of the Miami wide receiver, which is interesting but effective this season with 21 points from both of them. Amra St. Brown in the flex. Deontay Johnson now back. Sam Laporta, so really good pass catchers. Uh, he may want to look at maybe moving one of those guys for a potential running back as he only has – it will get David Montgomery back and James Conner at some point, uh, but he could still afford to uh, maybe cut ties with one of those wide receivers and target a running back before the fantasy trade deadline approaches. On the other side, even though you had that big performance from Jameer Gibbs, a lot of other guys let him down. Nico Collins, only five points. Michael Mayer, 2.4. Uh, Zay Flowers, we talked about him a decent amount as well. Um, 
No real big names. Terry McLaurin, but he's been soaping down, so you can't really blame him for not starting him. Uh, so that is how that matchup goes. The third matchup is between Cole and Doug. Very close matchup here. We had a 104.44 to 103.36 victory. Doug takes the W in this one as he moves to 5-3. and three. Coleman dropped to 4-4. Four and four. And that was despite the poor performance from Patrick Mahomes and Tony Pollard, but mainly thanks to Austin Eckler, his finally ba- backing out. David Njoku, a guy we haven't talked about too much this season, he had a nice day with 77 yards and a touchdown where Cole, uh, Dallas Goddard let him down. Christian Watson let him down. Let's take a look at some of these. Anybody, Gabe Davis on the bench. So Gabe Davis over any one of those Packers players probably gets him the victory. And then Brock Purdy over Patrick Mahomes would have definitely helped solidify uh, Doug's victory. But again, you don't, I can understand if you would have did it when the news came out that the illness and you weren't 100% sure and the potential of bad weather. Uh, but Patrick Mahomes ha- is the best quarterback in the league. So no harm, no foul in playing him. Then you have Snyder versus David. Snyder gets a pretty easy victory, 139.28 over David's 110.16. Let's check it out. Alvin Kamara, we'll talk about him. The Alvin Kamara, Christian McCaffrey stack could be uh, lethal as we move through the rest of the season, the way their guys are performing. Uh, Chris had a nice day. Garrett Wilson, a solid performance. And Joe Mixon even had a nice day. So really good performance throughout the whole team. 139 with Lamar getting less than 12 is a pretty good week. Uh, And he still has Debo Samuel on his team as well. So get him healthy after the 49ers bye week. And the team is cooking with gas. And the other side, we'll see what he does to replace Kirk Cousins, but he was still able to get a solid fantasy day before he left. Uh, Deontay Foreman really let him down. Justice Hill, uh, all the work to go to Gus Edwards. I mean, he did have 15 attempts, but Gus Edwards got the touchdowns. DJ Moore, not great. Um, The Falcons defense over the Titans. Seems like a solid stream, but when the rookie quarterback comes out of nowhere and throws up four tutties, uh, it's going to be a tough week for the defense there. Now, he did have Baker Mayfield on the bench. K.J. Osborne had a nice day, uh, but those guys you wouldn't have done enough to make up the difference. And the last matchup, I saved this one for last. Uh, one, because NFL just sorts them however they want, but two, Anthony gets his first victory over Brandon. Now, if you didn't check out last week's episode or you haven't been following along, this is your first time checking out. Thanks. Uh, Brandon was the number one seed heading into week eight in group C. Takes the loss to the, at the time, winless Anthony. Uh, So big win for Anthony to knock off the number one guy uh, as Brandon drops to three this week. But let's see what helped Anthony uh, this week. So he didn't have great performance from his running backs. And he had Cooper Cup, but he had CeeDee Lamb, Dalton Kincaid, Brees Hall. Drake London, before he uh, got a little banged up, he had eight points. So a pretty solid performance here. And he still had Sam Howe on the bench, which, again, I don't really play. I mean, Josh Allen, Sam Howe, they basically had the same performance. Howe had a little bit better, but you're never going to play Sam Howe over Josh Allen. So he just played everybody he needed to right on the bench uh, where – There was some decent points on the bench for Brandon as Kareem Hunt had 13, Michael Pittman had 14. And if you scroll up, he played Aaron Jones, who only had six. Calvin Ridley, he had 11, so that's a pretty good one. But Puka Nakua had 5.8. So a couple guys, if you would have had the perfect lineup, Brandon probably could have got the victory. That's not how it played out. And Anthony gets his first win of the season. And like I said, when we looked at the – the league, the league standings. Um, he's only, you know, three games out of fifth place. So a lot can happen uh, and a lot may happen. So make sure you stay tuned and follow along with these Couch GMs uh, World Cup and these recaps each and every week. Uh, but before we get out of here, let's get into the quickest Thursday night preview. Alrighty, and this week for Thursday Night Football, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Tennessee Titans. So the Tennessee Titans get the Steelers on a short week. 
Now they do have their new and exciting rookie quarterback after his four touchdown performance. Uh, and the Steelers defense is a lot uh, tougher to face than the Falcons. So we'll see how that plays out, but they get him on a short week. So not a lot of time to game plan, not a lot of time to watch as much film on him. So he could have another decent week this week. If you need a streamer, um, it's not the greatest option out there. Like I said, I would say I would play Derek Carr over Will Levis and that's how it is. But if you want a little bit more long play, that might be the answer for your waivers uh, or someone to stream if they made it through waivers. Uh, both, I know they didn't actually practice, but both Derek Henry and DeAndre Hopkins would have been limited. They've pretty much been limited all year long, getting some veteran rest. Uh, they should be good to go. Um, and the way Will Levis targeted DeAndre Hopkins, I feel like you have to get him back in your lineup. Um, and probably not going to be another three touchdown day. It'll probably be a little bit low scoring. Thursday night games are always, always weird. And then on the Steelers side, Kenny Pickett is good to go. Uh, so I like George Pickens this week. I wouldn't play Najee Harris as this uh, Titans run defense is pretty good, but I do like George Pickens and Deontay Johnson on the Steelers side. So Steelers side, you got Pickens and Deontay Johnson. Titan side, you have Derrick Henry and DeAndre Hopkins. And that's pretty and then Will Levis if you uh are in desperate need of a streamer. If you can't afford to wait and see what happens without a one week fluke, is this really the guy uh for the Titans? That's what you have to do. But that was the quickest Thursday night recap. As always, thanks for tuning in to uh, new episodes of the Outcast podcast. We'll be back later this week with a full breakdown of all the week nine matchups. Help you get through the bye weeks uh, as we progress through the rest of the season. Thanks again for listening. I'm Cody Workcap, and I'll talk to you all later in the week.